So when we're talking about Angular templating, we're not talking about a template for an Angular project. We're actually talking about the HTML code that corresponds with a component. And there are several different things that you can do with it. And we're going to cover interpolation, attributes and properties, event binding and references in this tutorial. And I'm going to show you how each of these are used and work with the Angular templating engine. So let's first of all look at the component that we've got set up in our project. And we've got one component, the app component. And you can see here it's got a reference when the component's created uh, to a template URL. And this is the file where the actual template is stored. Uh, it's worth noting as well, you can actually just use a template literal here or any other string uh, to do some templating. So if I wanted to just display a heading level one tag with some text inside of it, we can just replace that in line here and that will display in our app when it's previewed uh, in the browser. But it's worth using the uh, templating files uh, simply because sometimes it might get a little bit big, uh, but also it's good to have everything all in one place so you can see exactly what's inside the template. So if we go back to using that file, you'll see that we've got a HTML file here and this is all the markup that you can see on the page at the moment. It's the placeholder content that's provided when we create a new Angular app. So I'm just gonna remove all of this so we can start from a fresh template. And so we can put anything into this HTML file that we like. And as shown a moment ago, this will just appear in the uh, preview of the app when it reloads, which makes it a little bit bigger. So the first thing that we can do within a template is something called template interpolation. And this is basically just the process of taking a value uh, either in the template directly or from the component file and then displaying it on the page. So for example, we could say sum two plus two is equal to four. And that obviously displays on the page, but we can use a template interpolation to do this calculation for us. And if we use two open and closing curly braces, a set of two, uh, we can just put that sum directly in here. And this is kind of like running JavaScript code within your HTML. And you can see we get the same result uh, with the sum being calculated. And most JavaScript code will be okay to run in here. Uh, anything simple, uh, such as using any operators, so for example, if you had something that which had a faulty value like false or zero, we can then use a logical operator to kind of short circuit and give us the uh, next value in the chain. So we can, if that value, initial value is falsy, then we can just show uh, the value on the right hand side. And as I say, most JavaScript code will be valid here, but if you want to start using functions and stuff, then you should look at event binding, which we'll look at in just a moment but you're not probably going to use concrete values like this directly in your template. What you're more likely to do is use something that's been set up inside of your component. So within the class where the component is created, we can set up various public member properties such as title as we've got here, and we can use that identifier for that particular member variable within our template. So if we go back to the template and instead of having this sum here, we could just have a heading level two tag and just Again, with the double curly braces, use the reference to the title uh, member property in the class, and you can see that now appears in our page. So the advantage of doing things this way is that we can then go back to the member property, and this might be a value that's assigned dynamically, either from a network request or just something that we've calculated on the fly. Uh, so we can call uh, the title my new app, and you can see the template is updated uh, to reflect the new value that's been set. That's really what template interpolation is doing for us here. It's kind of providing a bit of a, a skeleton of what the page or the component should look like. And then we're filling in the blanks with these properties uh, that we supply in the actual uh, component class. So let's have a look at the next thing in our list, which is about all about attributes and properties. So we can use values inside of our component to actually customize how HTML element looks or behaves, uh, depending on what properties or attributes we set. So I'll give you a concrete example for this just to explain. So let's say we had a property on our class called input type. I'm gonna set that value to text. If we then go back over to our template and create a new input field, we can set this type property dynamically based on this value that we're setting here in the app component. So what we need to do is pop that into the type value here. And then what we actually need to do is put square braces around this to let Angular know that we want to use a variable that's been configured on our component. So if we save that now, we should find that we've got an input 
uh, field on our page and it's got a value of text so uh, we can see text in there but if we were to go back to our component and set this to password what we should find is when we go back to the input field its type has now been set to password uh, and so obviously the browser is recognizing that and uh, not showing us the text that's in uh, the input field. So again the advantage of doing this is that the input type might be set dynamically based on some kind of configuration or some kind of state that the app is in and you can just change this value to whatever you want whenever you want and the template will be updated to reflect it. So most attributes and properties that you can set on a HTML element will be able to be configured like this but it's probably worth noting that some things won't work quite as expected but Angular will tell you uh, if there's a problem that you need to look at. So that's how you set properties and attributes dynamically for HTML within your templates. Let's have a look at the next thing, which is all about event binding. And when we say event binding, we're talking about things like form submits and click events. So we're just going to take a really simple example for this and have a look at how uh, click events might work within your templates. So let's just create a button just after our input that we've got here and just say, uh, give it some text of click me. So normally in vanilla JavaScript, you would target the button and set up an event listener, but we can do that easily in Angular just by using parentheses and then specifying the type of event that we want to set up uh, for this particular element. In this case, I'm going to set up a click event and then we need to assign it a value. And that value is basically a function that we need to run on the component. So let's say we want to set up a function, say notify. You'll notice uh, when we run that code, we do get an error because it's telling us that the notify does not uh, function does not exist on app component. So what we need to do in our app component is actually create that function. And it's just a function on the class. So we create it a bit like this. And we can maybe run some code when this notify function is called, say, run a, an alert box, for example. So now anytime we click the button now, we should find that we get an alert box coming up with the hello world text. So that's the basics of event binding. And in essence, what we can do is set up any event based on the name that we pass into the parentheses here. And it's most likely you'll be doing things like click events or potentially submit events for forms, but pretty much any event can be configured this way too. So one thing that you might want to do with this click event is get the value uh, for this input field and then actually send it to this notify function. And you can do that in our last Thing that we're going to look at which is references or template references. So we can refer to a particular element on the page using a template reference in Angular and it'll look a little bit like this. If we find the element that we want to actually reference, so for example this input field and we'll just say it's your name. I'm just going to put a spam before this just to indicate what it is. Please enter your name. What we now have is a reference to this input field using the your name identifier. So when we call this notify function, what we can do is we can actually say notify with your name dot value because your name will just reference this input field. So we need to actually get its value. And now when we go to our app component, we can actually access that value inside of the function. So let's say this not notify function accepts a value of text. Uh, which should stop that error from appearing in the browser there. So now instead of saying hello world, we can say hello and then provide the text that's been actually uh, given to us as an argument to this function. And we'll probably want to change this back to text rather than number. So if we now go over to the input field and type something in and then click the click me button, that event listener will run, call this notify function, which has accessed the input field as a reference and got its value. And you may be able to see on the screen there now that the alert box has come up with the customized text. So there's a lot more things that you can do with templating in your components, like conditionally rendering things and rendering lists of things. So if you're interested in learning more about that, then you should check out the next video where we're going to go through the ng if and ng for directives.